Thanks be to the risen Christ. I hope you remember that I told you in the last class we will be greeting each other by calling out to the risen Christ from this session. All right. In the last class, you remember we discussed about the experience of the disciples and the profession of Saint Thomas and his faith. Today, we will be seeing further about the faith of Saint Thomas and discuss what true discipleship is. Before we begin the class. Let us join our hands and meditate upon this true faith that we see in our forefathers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of faith which you have bestowed in us. Getting to know you and having faith in you as the true God is what we have been blessed with. Help us to stay strong in this faith and believe that you are the only one true God. We also pray for all the people who are in and around the world, sick, suffering, who might be having lots of difficulties and pain to experience happiness and joy in all physical and mental state. We thank you for the blessings that you shower upon us. Help us to learn the lessons properly and remember what is taught to us in this session. We ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Thomas and his faith was where we left in the last session. We saw that St. Thomas used a specific word, My Lord, my God, when he professed his faith in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 20, verse 28. I want you to take a look at this verse once more as depicted in the Gospel and then we'll discuss something about it. Here we go, let's take a look at the Gospel of St. John chapter 24 onwards. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We saw St. Thomas when he experienced Christ immediately says the word, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to Thomas, You believe because you have experienced and seen me in person. But blessed are those who believe without even witnessing or seeing me. We see that this proclamation of St. Thomas and his faith is where Christ is giving us an example that we are also called to believe in him not by merely witnessing and learning things but with the true faith in him by experiencing and knowing that it exists. We see St. Paul talking about the same faith in his letter to the Romans chapter 10. Kindly take your Bible so then we can take a reference in this. In the letter to Romans, chapter 10, verse 9 onwards, St. Paul says, Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and in your heart you believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. By believing with the heart, you are put right with God. By confessing the faith with your lips, you are saved. Here, we see that anybody who believes in God and proclaims that faith with his lips and heart will be saved. The saved here refers to the eternal salvation which God will bless us with for our true faith. We also see in the letter to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 about a distinct definition on faith. Let us take a look at the same. In the letter to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 we read, Faith is the guarantee of the things we hope for and the certainty of the things that we do not see. I read again, 
Faith is the guarantee of the things we hope for and the certainty of the things that we do not see. Which means faith is something where we might not be sure of what we are believing in but is a strong assurance of hope within us. Let's put it by the term unconditional hope in a strong assurance called God. Me and you all, you all are quite younger, more younger children, are called to believe in God into this faith. Let me give you a simple example. One fine day when your parents are going out to work and promise you that they'll get you an ice cream, you do have that hope within your heart. Okay, this evening when Papa or Mommy is coming home, she or he is going to get me an ice cream. When you have this strong belief in you, in your parents that they will bring you this, by the end of the day when they come, you do see the ice cream in their hands. You know that the faith or the belief you had in your dad or mom is fulfilled when you receive the ice cream. Similar is the case of our faith. But the difference is, this ice cream will not be a visibly seen thing. Instead, it can sometimes be invisible hope as well. The hope and belief that God is somewhere out there watching each of us, taking care of us, giving us providence, protecting us from all things evil. This should be our real faith. Not just looking at things, hearing it and believing it, but knowing that everything will be for good because of the providence of God. From this is where we see and specifically learn the term, My Lord, My God. It is known in the Syriac by the term Marvalaha. Probably this will be your first baby step to know and learn the language as well. In Syriac, Mar Walaha, my Lord, my God, is specifically denoting and giving us a symbol of doubting Thomas walking into a Thomas who is the father of faith. The word Alaha in this term specifically refers to the meaning my God. Here, this sentence or the verse Marvalaha is also a standing example and the first step of every Christian into the faith that Christ Jesus is the Son of God and the Son of Man. Lord was the term by which the disciples addressed Christ, their Master. And God was the first time ever where anybody addressed Christ and that person to do it was Saint Thomas. And so, this verse of Saint Thomas, Marvalaha, is the perfect example and a standing proclamation of Christ, the Son of Man and the Son of God. With this in mind, we will now take a look at the true discipleship which was followed by all the disciples of Christ and we learn it specifically through Saint Thomas and this proclamation of his faith. When we see who is the disciple of Christ, what do you think is the answer that you have in your mind? A disciple of Christ is somebody who follows Christ not just in his beliefs but through all his teachings, life and the entire footsteps. We see that all the disciples of Christ lived a life like Christ. To see and learn this specifically, we can see that after the death of Judas Iscariot, in the Acts of the Apostles, all the disciples gather together to select and choose that one person to fill the space of Judas. We see that Matthias is chosen as the twelfth disciple once more. Let's read this verse once more from the Gospel. The criterion for a disciple of Christ is clearly mentioned by Saint Peter in this verse. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 21 to 22. We see, Saint Peter says, Therefore, we must choose someone from among those who were with us during all the time that the Lord Jesus moved about with us, beginning with John's baptism until the day when Jesus was taken away from us. One of these has to become with us witness to his resurrection. St. Peter specifically tells and talks that a disciple of Christ will be the one who knew Christ and has experienced Christ 
right from his baptism until his death and resurrection which is a clear witness to the life, passion, death and resurrection of Christ. That truly is one of the criterions and the musts to become a disciple of God. A disciple is one who follows the footsteps of the master, lives with the master, learns from the master and imparts the teachings of the master to the people in the world. We, the children of God, are called to follow and take part in this discipleship of Christ. We also see further references in the letters and epistles written by the apostles to various churches about the discipleship of Christ. Here, St. John specifically proclaims that he and all the disciples are witnessing and preaching the Christ whom they have seen, experienced, believed and lived with. Let us read that verse from the Bible to know and have a better clarity. We see in the first letter of John, chapter 1, verse 1, he says, This is what we proclaim, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our own hands, concerning the word who is life. This life was made visible to each one of us, the children of God, by the disciples through their true discipleship. Hence, we must understand that discipleship and becoming a true disciple of Christ is to follow, know, learn, experience and live with Christ through each walk of our life and proclaim and teach the same to the people in and around the world. Let us be the little leavens or messengers of Christ who give small pieces of Christ to each people who encounter us. This should be one of the tasks and the obligation which we take up in our life as a Christian. With this discussed, let us take a look at how and why wishing peace has a significant importance in our faith and customs. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Let us offer one another a meaningful and loving sign of peace. We see that during the Holy Mass, the celebrant wishes us peace be with you and we, the laity, respond with, with you and with your spirit. This specific greeting of peace can be related and resembled with Christ Jesus who addresses his disciples and each of the junctures where he appears to people and wishes them peace be with you. Samadhanam ningalodu kode. When Christ clearly mentions this, it is a blessing that peace has been bestowed upon us, the peace of God. When the celebrant in the Holy Mass wishes us peace and blesses us with peace, we must understand that it is Christ himself, the risen Christ himself, who is wishing us peace and giving us the blessings to lead life in peace. We as the children of God, should take this peace which is within us that has been given by God to the people that we encounter and partake with in life. The same would be the best thing for us to do as a Christian to other people around us. With this being discussed, we have come to the conclusion of Lesson 12, My Lord, My God, where we saw about the profession of St. Thomas and his faith and the term My Lord, My God which has a significant note and point in the faith of every Christian and also understood what is true discipleship and what and how we should be wishing peace to the people in and around our life. Take a moment to look into the stories which has been told and depicted about St. Thomas in history and try to write down any one of those stories sub with the same to your catechism teacher. Until we meet in the next class, let us all pray to God to have a strong faith and also believe that Christ is the Lord and God who does things for our good. Have a great day. Thank you. you